if they want to. Talk don't bother me. And welcome to Let Them Talk. I'm Paul DiRienzo. And I'm Miss Joan Marie Moosey. And our guest is Sarah Taylor, a correspondent for the Revolutionary Worker newspaper. Revolution uh, newspaper. Revolution New name. newspaper. Formerly New name, Revolutionary right. Worker, now well, Revolution. Well, thank you. I have to renew my subscription, I guess. Yeah, you that. should. And <laughs> that's a great, yeah, you should. Yeah, you should. You've been well, welcome out. to the show. The last time you were here, I wasn't here, so. Yeah, well, thanks for having me back. Absolutely. Great. And we discussed religion back around Christmas time and Hanukkah and Easter and all the, well now it's Easter and, uh, and uh, Kwanzaa, but now we have a slightly different subject, but it's related, I think, in a way. Yeah. Because religion has impacted, uh, you know, the rights of women for hundreds of, not thousands of years and uh, has delineated exactly what rights women have or don't have in society, in all societies around the world. Uh, so uh, in a way, talking about religion and talking about not feminism, women's rights. I don't know. How would you describe what your well, your topic tonight? Tonight, we, you know, as a writer for Revolution newspaper, I did want to come on and talk mm -hmm. about a special issue of Revolution that we put out. On um, it's a declaration uh, for women's liberation and the emancipation of all humanity. So it's talking about the fact, and it opens up with the fact that women all over the planet, if you spin the globe anywhere you look, women are being held down and slammed backwards. Whether it's the um, girl babies who are cast off in the dumpsters and garbage heaps in China, or women who are shackled um, during childbirth in the prisons in this country, or women in El Salvador who abortion is illegal, and women have been arrested out of the hospital rooms, emergency rooms, um, if they have perforated uteruses. Their uteruses have even been seized and used as evidence to imprison them. Where the, the forms could be as different as women being covered head to toe in a burqa or being stripped naked and put on, a sex, on the international sex slave trade market. Now, do you think there's but been the commonality is that women all over the planet are oppressed. Now, do you think there's been progress since the 70s, since the women's liberation movement in the United States? Do you well, think that's had a strong effect in the world at large? Or? Well, this is one of the things that is, that is dealt with in this declaration. It goes through the origins of women's oppression, but then also the struggles to uproot women's oppression. In particular, it highlights the struggle in revolutionary China, which was the most emancipatory period, particularly the great proletarian cultural revolution in China for women and for humanity overall. And then this had an impact, and it mm -hmm. goes through how this influenced even the, the radical women's liberation movement in this country that was inspired by a lot of what was happening there, but then also digging into the ways that women are oppressed in different ways in a capitalist country like this. And then, you know, we chronicle in this piece what were the accomplishments of the women's liberation movement. The right to abortion was one, the right to birth control without being in the confines of marriage, the um, idea that rape would be recognized as a social phenomenon and that marital rape would be recognized. Um, women, even the sexual revolution, women being able to fight for the right to express and explore their own sexuality without being demeaned and degraded for it. There were tremendous... Have we won that? <laughs> Pardon me? Have we won that? Well, this is then tremendous things were accomplished, but a revolution was not made. And even in, and we, we deal with this, but even in its origins, there were two different streams contending mm. within the women's movement, sort of a bourgeois feminist movement that just fought for the rights of women to have equal access within, mm -hmm. it isolated the question of women's rights. Can and we it, define our terms for a moment? Yes. Because most people, the term revolution is, you can hear it in so many sort of strange ways. I mean, there's a revolutionary new fabric softener. Yeah, you know, there's, you know, revolution is used quite a lot. How, what do you mean when you say revolution? I have to say I'm so now, Without glad. going too long into yeah. that. You know. No, I'm so glad you asked because it is true. Revolution, when I use it, and, and scientifically what a revolution is, is it's a seizure of state power. It's the overturning of the old social order and the old state, the dismantling of this system, and the establishment of a new economy, a new social system, and a new state power. Well, and that was not, a, it's more than just a lot of social upheaval or even change in attitudes. And a revolution was not made in the 60s or the 70s. And so even the great things that were advanced and won in the women's liberation movement have been being, mm -hmm. there's been a huge backlash because the system remained intact. Mm -hmm. So even the things that were won were not able to be maintained. And then the system regrouped and came back with a very vicious assault on women's rights. And including even the question of have, are women sexually empowered or liberated? Well, no, even women's sexual liberation 
got contorted and perverted into a, you know, just a fluorescence of pornography, pornography being even more, quote unquote, respectable and mainstream even as it got more vicious and, and brutal in its depictions. And sex itself in a capitalist society becomes a commodity. So both these things are happening that undermine and, and contorted what was a very positive phenomenon of women's sexual liberation is actually been confined again because the revolution wasn't made. And, and we actually, it's part of why we need a revolution to unhinge sex and women's bodies as a commodity. <laughs> I'm ready to unhinge sex, definitely. <laughs> 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 now something I wanted to ask you, the declaration says for women's liberation and the emancipation of all beings. It's sort of like a Buddhist thing. Were there it's very uh, not Buddhist. It's I have not, to say. Buddhist okay. is kind of, but it's not anti-male is what I'm actually it's getting definitely at. Definitely not anti-male. So you're not anti-sex, you're not anti-male. No. I mean, this gets to the roots of women's oppression. It's Look, the men are socialized to be dominating and oppressive towards women. And the family structure mm -hmm. is a family, is it's a structure that has its origins in chattel slavery. The origin of the word fam family comes from the Latin familia, which is the male head of household and all his living possessions. His when did women slaves, actually become... His wives, his children. When did... I think in, in American society, even uh, women were not allowed to own property until yeah. less than a century ago. Yeah. So it's yeah. not... The idea of women even owning or being able to uh, inherit property from their families is mm -hmm. a very limited... Uh, and life. actually, through the majority of human history, women have been... Actually, not the majority, but since classes emerged, mm -hmm. women have been deemed property and then deemed the breeders of new property. So are you against marriage? Well, in this, you know, I'm not against marriage per se, but the, but the origins of marriage are property relations, and eventually, you Now, know, what about same-sex marriage? Well, I, I, we're definitely against discrimination in the institution of marriage. Everybody should have the basic right to marry. Um, it, but then the character of marriages have to transform to more and more Break Did you down see the, the Miss USA pageant last night or Sunday night? You know, I was flipping channels and I and I watched it for about twenty seconds and I thought, wow, this is like a a dog show. This really is like property. Oh, I love pageants. Oh, I I, 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 I can't look at them and not think this is property. Among women in but the, world the, thing, the reason I brought it up was because in you know at the end how they ask them questions. Mm -hmm. There's like the final question that determines mm -hmm. whether they're truly worthy to be Miss USA. Yeah. And um, one of the questions was by Perez Hilton, he's like an internet gossip columnist, yeah. and he asked one of the contestants, um, what do you think about same-sex marriage? Mm -hmm. And she was considered like a big contender and even was the second place person. Mm -hmm. But they're saying she lost the crown because of her answer. She said she was for it. She said she was against it. Oh, wow. Well. I, you know, it's a weird <laughs> world. I have to say, things come up in weird ways. <laughs> I, I, pageants and the idea of putting women I watched the 20 seconds I watched they had Miss Photogenic oh, and, yeah, and everybody was, was voting in the country right. everybody yeah. was voting on these on these <laughs> photos of these women it was it was flesh and commodities look well, women are human beings I just think this idea that women should be evaluated principally by their appearance by their bodies by all of that it's bound up mm. with women being viewed as property of men as breeders or as sex objects well,